I just want to start by saying that there is no correct way of understanding a poem. Even just saying that feels ridiculous. I have no formal training yet. I am thinking about applying to a creative writing course in Oxford uh, next year, but we'll see how that goes. I have no la di da way of analysing a poem the right way, just what I've picked up along the way. Just like when you're writing your poems, when you're reading poetry you have to be totally open and be prepared to be vulnerable even. Um, if you really want to experience, get the true experience of reading poetry. Something I find really helpful, especially when you're just starting out, is uh, reading collections that actually have introductions to the poems. A collection that really moves me um, and I think would be really helpful for you is this collection here, Poems That Make Grown Men Cry. Each poem has an introduction to the poem by uh, a famous actor or someone in showbiz, I guess. And they kind of explain what they got from the poem and what they feel the poem's about, which I find is a very good way to, as I already said, I find it's a very good way to kind of get started um, so you can kind of see what other people are thinking and how other people are interpreting poems. So I will leave a, a link for this. This isn't sponsored by the way. I will leave a link for this. There's also a poems that make grown women cry as well that you can check out. Links for those will be in the description below. Also I find that modern and contemporary poetry doesn't usually take too much thinking or deciphering. And I don't say that as a bad thing at all. Personally, I'm one of those poets that like to write to the point pieces at the time of filming this video anyway. Modern poetry that doesn't take too much thinking or deciphering is exactly what got me into writing in the first place. So with that being said, I am going to be looking at older pieces and longer pieces that have more of a hidden message, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what poem I'm going to choose as an example for this video, so we'll see what happens. So if you want to learn how to appreciate poetry past the minimalist micro poetry of Instagram, keep watching. Sorry about the rain. So, why should you care about how I think you should read a poem. Well, believe it or not, especially in the more classical poems, there's this whole other world behind them that really brings an adrenaline rush once you've cracked the code or the light bulb goes off once you've discovered the hidden meaning behind a line that you originally thought was just a basic to the point line. Again, apologies if you can hear the tapping of the rain on my little plastic garden shed. I am in England and it rains a lot. But anyway, where do you start? Well, funnily enough, when it comes to reading poetry, the first step is probably the most simple, and I haven't seen anybody talk about it. If you really want to dive into poetry and really experience reading poetry, then you have to find yourself in the right mindset. I don't know about you, but when I sit down to read poetry and when I really want to kind of ingest it and just take it all in, I have to find myself in the right frame of mind. If you follow me on my other socials, or if you're subscribed to my newsletter, you'll know that I have a lot going on. And having lived that way every day for the last three years, it's very hard to just slow my mind down and really ingest what I'm reading. So here's what I recommend. Find yourself in a nice, quiet space, maybe your room or office or study, maybe light a few candles. I know it sounds a bit much, but trust me. Then, make sure your mind is totally at ease and thinking about nothing else. Having reset your body, it's now time to delve into the human condition. Next thing you want to do, after obviously opening the book or presenting yourself with the poem, take in the title. Now, as a poet myself, I'm absolutely awful at titling my pieces. I just don't do it. But that is something I'm going to change and start doing from this video onwards. See, we all have improvements to make. Anyway, let's go to my computer screen now and look at a practical example of reading a poem. So... Now, this is one of my all-time favourite poems. To a Poet A Thousand Years Hence by James Elroy Flecker. When you first come to read a poem, 
Take a good look at the title. What is it telling you? What preconceptions have you already got in your head? Well, luckily I've picked a really easy one for you. Uh, it's very clear that the poem that follows is some kind of letter to poets in the future, right? To a poet, excuse me, to a poet a thousand years hence by James Elroy Flecker. Good. So, next comes another very obvious and very important part. Reading the actual poem. The first time you go over the poem, try to relax and just let your mind ingest what it's reading. Then, you read it again. So, let me read it along with you. I, who am dead a thousand years, and wrote this sweet archaic song, send you my words for messengers, the way I shall not pass along. I care not if you bridge the seas, or ride secure the cruel sky, or build consummate palaces of metal or of masonry, but have you wine and music still, and statues and bright-eyed love, and foolish thoughts of good and ill, and prayers to them who sit above? How shall we conquer, like a wind that falls at eve our fancies blow? And old, I have no idea how you say that, Maonites the blind, and old Maonites the blind, said it three thousand years ago. O oh, friend unseen, unborn, unknown, student of our sweet English tongue, read out my words at night, alone. I was a poet, I was young. Since I can never see your face, and never shake you by the hand, I send my soul through time and space to greet you. You will understand. Man, I love that poem. So this isn't a video on analysis as such. It's more of a video for beginners who are just now starting to read poetry. But what were your first impressions after your first read through of the poem? How did it make you feel? These are the sort of questions you need to start asking yourself once you've read it through the first time. But don't think about it too hard though. Let your opinion just sort of form naturally. If absolutely nothing is coming to mind, guess what? You can read the poem again, and then again, and then again. Actually, you can't really read a poem too much. Okay, maybe if you read it 10 times, it might be a bit overkill and maybe just move on, I guess. But really, you can read a poem three or four times before you actually start grasping what the poet is saying, really saying. But let's get back to the poem. So, how did it make you feel? Kind of sad? Hopeful? For me, I get a sense of sorrowful longing, a defeat from this poem. Now, remember this is all subjective and you might see something totally different than me, which is what makes this so exciting really. I could be projecting my own feelings onto this because that's how I feel about my own society and generation. I think that's why I relate to this poem so much, because I can really see myself as the longing and desperate poet. Anyway, I went on a tangent there. What are your initial thoughts on the piece? Pause this video, I'll wait, and make a note on your phone or some paper. Just jot down your initial thoughts, feelings, and in one sentence what you think the point or message of the poem is. Okay. Thank you for pressing play and continuing with this video and allowing me to continue to live through your screen. Okay, so now you've written some thoughts on how the poem made you feel or maybe even how you think the poet felt when writing this piece, it's time to read the poem again. But this time taking it very slow and really trying to understand what each line means. Okay, I probably won't do this example for every line but I'll kind of start off. Uh, this poem is quite an easy one, I think, I hope, I'm sorry if, if you're struggling with this then I'm really sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to say it was easy. But anyway, I who am dead a thousand years. So he's obviously, you know, a poet who's died, a, you know, a long, very long time ago um, and it sets, it already sets uh, the tone of the poem and wrote this sweet archaic song, send you my words for messengers. The way I shall not pass along. Um, so rather than do it line by line, because this one is quite, you know, easy, let's do it, sta I would say that's a beat and that's a stanza right there. So I who am dead a thousand years and wrote this sweet archaic song, send you my words for messengers, the way I shall not pass along. I think that's very simple. So he's saying he's obviously a 
dead and he wrote this piece um, and he's sending it to us for us to read and then obviously uh, pass it along and share it with our friends which is something he can't do because he has been dead a thousand years he's long gone obviously I care not if you bridge the seas or ride to cure this cruel sky or build consummate palaces of metal or of masonry but have you wine and music still and statues and bright-eyed love and foolish thoughts of good and ill and prayers to them who sit above how shall we conquer like a wind that falls at eve our fancies blow and old mayonides that the blind said it three thousand years ago so yeah basically it goes on the rest of the poem i would say it's just kind of he cares not you know he doesn't care how technologies have advanced he doesn't care you know the different things we have you know what does he say like planes or rides secure the cruel sky he doesn't care you know um that we you know we've got planes now and we we can easily travel the world or bridge the seas you know i'm not sure if he means i don't think he means that literally building bridges but you know technically the planes of today's society are bridges the bridges of seas you know so we can go between different countries so easily um or consummate palaces of metal or of masonry he, he you know he doesn't care about all these fancy things ham you know material things he then goes on to say but have you wine and music still and statues of bright eye of statues and bright eyed love you know he goes on to explain about the very human things that he he probably loved in his life um and who doesn't you know he's just wondering if we're still human you know are we still celebrating what it is to be human um and foolish thoughts of good and ill see this is all very human things and prayers to them who sit above are we still religious do we still care about god um i'm not sure when this was written off the top of my head i want to say the 20s maybe 40s i want to say 1921 i could be way off there um so i think people were very much religious back then but you'd have to do your research on that um but i think people were very religious back then um and so in the first reading i have no idea what that mayonnaise is but thinking about it it sounds like and old mayonnaise the blind said it three thousand years ago so maybe a quick google search will tell you this but I'll, obviously i'm filming this video um mayonnaise sounds like probably a greek maybe a greek god or an, a fellow greek poet said it three thousand years ago oh friend unseen unborn unknown student of our sweet english tongue read out my words at night anyway yeah this is all subjective and it, you know you can do it all by yourselves in your own time um i hope that helped um i really kind of like to spend the time and i've got to record two videos today um so i'm going to move on but hopefully you kind of get the gist of it take it line by line very slow uh, I would recommend taking a, sh if you really kind of want to get used to this, take a Shakespeare or a very archaic poem, which will take some serious deciphering and because it's in Old English, um, and that will really kind of help you. This is a very, very simple poem to read and decipher. We're not really analysing it just yet, although I think I kind of just did. Oh, I'm all over the place. Let's move on. Hopefully, because you made those initial notes, You've already in the back of your mind got an indication of what you think the poem's about and how the poem made you feel. So hopefully the second time round you really kind of understood it on a much deeper level. Of course when it comes to proper analysis I accidentally sort of started diving into it uh, in the second uh, voiceover. There is way more to think about when you're really analysing a poem. Like what Mayonides might have meant to the poem and how similar writing styles, blah, blah, blah. There's so many different avenues you can kind of really start to dive into. But I will be doing a full video on poetry analysis soon, so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications for that, and then we can really get into the nitty-gritty. But actually, I also really want to keep my videos easy to follow and accessible, so don't panic too much. It's not going to be too academic. My videos never are. So remember that reading poetry is supposed to be fun. It's analysing the poem that's the hard work. 
Please remember to keep the two practices separate, even if I myself accidentally slip into analysing a poem rather than just reading it. As humans, we're each going to take something different away from a poem and season it with different spices of our own lives. And that's what makes it more exciting. After watching this video, I'd love you to take the first two poems that come off your shelf and let me know in the comments down below what your initial thoughts were and how it made you feel. But no in-depth analysis just yet. You're already halfway there though. My name's Adam Gary and I'm a writer and a poet. If you like my videos, you can find content across my other social platforms like Instagram and now TikTok too. I love saying that, TikTok too. Please remember to hit subscribe and turn on notifications if you do find my videos helpful. I also have a weekly newsletter where I give you reading suggestions, weekly tips, and just general knowledge about what's going down in Garytown. I can't believe I just said that. If you do want to subscribe to my newsletter and get a free PDF on how to become a working poet, I'll leave a description down in the description below. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.